Hello everyone, great to be with you. Michael Griffiths here, founder of Referral Marketing Guru, and welcome to this week's Get More Referrals Today podcast. I want to share with you a little story from last week as a great example on how we think we're doing a good job, where in fact we're not. We're not being anywhere near as remarkable as what we could. And you know that you're supposed to do a good job. You're supposed to be great. But there's only a few businesses that really think about how do they become remarkable. And in today's world, that's how you stand out, by being remarkable. It's not so much what you do as in how you think. You have to want to be remarkable. You have to become obsessed with Little things matter. Close enough's not good enough. And when you become that, then your business starts to become remarkable. I'm going to get into the story real soon. As always, if this is the first time you've joined us, welcome. Whether you're listening to us on your favorite podcast station, iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, if you're watching us on YouTube or any of our social platforms, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you never miss an episode ever again. We don't run ads. We don't put on sponsors. How do we grow the show? Well, if you love what you're hearing, if you love what you're seeing, love for you to be able to share it with other people. Hey, we're on a really simple mission to inspire a million consultants every single year to play a bigger game in their business, to win every day, to be more profitable than ever before, so they can go and help contribute and change society for the better. So if you've enjoyed the show, hey, it's really simple. Love for you to be able to share it out with your networks, email it over to a few, few friends, hit that share button, send it off to a handful of people would be greatly appreciated. So let's get stuck into today's show. Today's show is just an example of how you can be more remarkable, how in fact, you probably think you're doing a really good job, but you probably don't even know that you're not. You probably don't even know that you're shooting yourself in the foot. You probably don't even know the reputation that you're getting, which is negative, rather than positive, because you don't have the thought process of being remarkable. So let me dive into this through something that happened last week. So we had our partnership club intensives last week. I pretty much just finished up. And we got stuffed around by, by our printers who got the work done, then put it on a courier, and it took five days to, to get to us. So that was the first little problem, but that's not where the story's going to go. Uh, did they do a good job? Yeah, no. Will they, the printer be used again? Probably not. Because simply, if you're going to put something on a courier, your job's not done. Your job's done when the client actually has what they ordered. So you should be following up. You should be checking in. You should be making sure that what you sent has been received. Different story. So let's then move in. We've got six days to be able to get our stuff, which are sitting in a sort of regional town in New South Wales, out across the globe. So we get passed on to a logistics freight company. It was a referral to that company. So wait, I trust this person. I have faith in this person, it's a client of theirs? Sure, really, at this point in time, whatever it's gonna cost us, it's gonna cost us. Getting things to our guys before the event is the only thing that matters to me. So here we are, and they give me a call. Hey, sounds good. Talks the talk, says, let's concentrate on getting everything booked in by 11, and then we'll be able to get it this afternoon. It's a Friday. But yeah, not a problem at all. Just let's get it done. Again, the cost of it didn't matter to me. It was like the priority is get it done. So, so far, 
we're all good. We went to about all right, 10 past nine in the morning. So we send over the uh, our clients' names and addresses. We're still at about 10 past four getting things booked in. So obviously it's not going to now get picked up on Friday. The problem right now is the lack of communication. You have to realize that you do your thing every single day. Like it's just common sense to you. It's common practice. But on the flip side, the other person doesn't know what's going on. For us, we've never used a logistics freight company ever before. I don't know the process. I don't know what they're doing behind the scenes. I don't know what's supposed to happen. I have one thing that I care about, and that's that our clients get what they need in time. That's it. So I'm constantly emailing back throughout the afternoon. Can you fill me in on what's going on? I, I understand that you've got a process to follow. I just don't understand it. Can you just fill me in? Can you just let me know? Very little communication back. I think one email. So I'm just assuming now, okay, maybe they'll get them on Saturday. I, I don't know. I don't know how it works. So then Monday morning, I sent an email. Can you please let me know what's happening when they'll get picked up? So this is like Monday the 15th. And on the spreadsheet they've sent of delivery time, some of them are going to be delivered by the 16th. In fact, I'm just, just double checking. No, Monday was the 16th. And on the spreadsheet, a couple of them said they'll be delivered by the 16th. Like, well, that obviously can't happen, can it? Because they're still sitting in Foster in a regional town in New South Wales. They've got no hope of being able to get to that location that during that day. They haven't even been picked up yet. So my anxiety and my anxiousness is going up and up and up. Not because I don't believe they could do what they said, but because I've got no reference points. I've got no communication. Understand that as a lesson right now on how do you do things. Just because you do it every single day, does that mean you just expect that they should know? And the fact is they don't, especially if they've never used you before. You should be like, a thousand times more over communicating. It's such a simple thing that we shoot ourselves in the foot with. So as we move on, I get an email back, I don't know, maybe mid morning on the Monday. So I've heard nothing for 90 odd minutes. Haven't heard again from the first person that phoned me. It's now just a customer service person on, on email. How much do they actually really care? Don't know. My gut feel said not a great deal. They're just doing their job and they're ticking the boxes and they're doing whatever they want. So I get a message from my program manager. The boxes have gone at about one o'clock. At least that was the first step. They're out of here. So now we're Monday the 16th. The boxes have gone. There's no way the ones that say they're going to be delivered on the 16th are going to be delivered on the 16th. So I know that. But I'm going, okay, that's okay. They can be delivered by the 17th. We're still good. We've got till Thursday. And on our spreadsheet, every box besides two internationally, we're going to be get there by either the 17th, the 18th, or the 19th at the very latest. And the 19th was the day of. There were like only three that were on the 19th. So I was okay with that. 98% we're going to get it by the day before. So then I start getting 
phone calls from the couriers. Oh, we can't deliver to PO boxes. Like, why were we told that? We could have called our people to get the actual physical address. Why am I finding out from the courier that we can't deliver to PO boxes? Like, they've got to have dealt with that one time before to know that. Then I'm getting more phone calls from couriers. And in my mind, I'm going, isn't a logistics company who is organizing, like we're paying them to get this done. Your job's not just to set it up. Your job is to look after your client and make sure that the end outcome is fulfilled. That's what your job should be. And if you don't see your job as that, you need to, if you expect then people to rant and rave about how good your service is. Because that might be on par with what everyone else does. And there's our problem. There's our problem with your business right now. You're comparing it to what everyone else does. And honestly, everyone else and their business sucks. So if you're going to compare it to what everyone else does, then you already aren't remarkable. So my experience obviously hasn't been fantastic, but that's because of what I suppose is in my head to what should have happened or how I would have had that business running versus what actually did happen. Now, what actually did happen could be the norm. I wouldn't know. What actually did happen might have been exceptional service versus normal. I wouldn't know. I've got no reference points to be able to compare anything to. So as a business, that's our job. Our job is to make sure that our customer, our client, they actually know every step what's going to happen. It's really easy for us to go, because we live and breathe this every single day. We're entrenched in it. We know what's gonna happen. So it's easy to forget that over there, your customer, your client, they don't know. And therefore, anxiety goes up, stress levels go up, worry goes up, overwhelm goes up. All of those feelings that you don't want your client to have will naturally creep in. Because when we don't know what's going on, or we don't know what's happening, or we don't know what to do next, the little voice in our brain takes over, which creates fear, worry. Is this working? Did I make a right choice? Am I going to get everything to our clients that we need in time? Or am I going to look stupid? All of those things take place. And if your job of providing a business, of having a business, if your job in that business is to provide remarkable experience, so therefore your clients will go and talk, rant, rave, be walking billboards for you for life, then honestly, 99% of people listening to this right now, you're shooting yourself in the foot because you don't consciously think about them and how they would be feeling or think about all the stepping stones and the emotions that they are going through and then fix up your processes, your systems, your communications to ensure that in the end, they go, wow, what an experience that was. Now, it's not difficult to do, but the part that is difficult It's changing the thinking, not accepting good enough. Close enough is good enough. Oh, yeah, what? It's not the end of the world. Like that sort of mentality, that sort of of way of thinking is why you're substandard. It's why good enough is good enough. 
Good enough isn't good enough. Good is good. Great is great. Remarkable is winning. So why would you just want to be good? You've got a choice. So I understand, got a lot going on, trying to grow the business, trying to keep people happy. But honestly, this is your best form of marketing you have. If you rely on referrals, I'm going to take a guess that this organization relies on referrals. There's one less person now who's out there being a walking, talking, ranting, raving billboard for them. Just simply because they just didn't think about how their client or customer would be feeling and the experience that they're going through from start to finish. It's not difficult to do, but it's so powerful when you get this right. In a world where we go, let's automate things, let's give things off to other people, let's outsource things. And none of that's a problem. But the problem is when you remove human communication, that becomes a problem. Because as humans, we judge everything on how we are made to feel. And if you don't make the other person feel a particular way, you ain't being remarkable whatsoever. Hope that was super helpful through sharing A, the experience, but B, seeing some pitfalls that you could be making yourself right now. And if you are, it's time to fix them up. In Partnership Club, it's all about how do we be more remarkable? We bring in tribe of consultants from around the globe to help them be more remarkable, more profitable, so therefore they can be more impactful. If you're interested in Partnership Club, just visit thatpartnershipclub.com.au and you can find out more whether that's a tribe for you. Thanks for joining in, guys. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. No matter what favorite podcast platform you are listening to right now, whether you're on our socials, never miss an episode. And as always, love your feedback. Shoot us an email, drop us a line on social media. And until next time, take care. Go crush it today. See you later, all.